Hello, everyone. It is Realtor Mike Thomas coming to you from Palm Beach County, Florida, and I am here to talk to you about money. So if you're looking to buy some real estate, whether it's for yourself, an investment, to fix, to flip, whatever it is, I'm going to go through all of the um, processes and ways of you getting money in real estate, everything from government loans to private angel money, okay? So let's get started, and you're going to want to watch the whole entire video because the stuff at the end will just <laughs> blow your mind. It's going to be amazing, and you're going to um, really be happy that you've watched it all the way through, okay? So let's get started. So you're looking to buy a house. Okay, if it's a single family home or if it's your primary residence, if you live in it, okay, owner occupied, and it is your only home that you have, uh, then you only have to put down uh, anywhere from three and a half percent on an FHA mortgage to five uh, percent uh, minimum down payment for a regular conventional mortgage, which is government loans. They sell it on the secondary market. Uh, it's FHA, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, those type of loans, okay? So minimum requirement, if you're going to live in it and it is your primary residence, it is three and a half percent or 5% conventional. The difference between FHA and conventional is that uh, FHA carries a mortgage insurance premium for the entire life of the loan. What is mortgage insurance premium, you ask? Good question. I am so glad you asked, okay? Mortgage insurance premium is insurance that you carry because you don't have enough equity in the home. Until you get to about 20% equity in your home, and it could be two or three years later, maybe the property values have gone up to uh, a point where you have 20% equity in the home, then on a conventional mortgage, you get to call up the bank, have an appraiser come out, reappraise the property, and remove the mortgage insurance premium that you're paying for every single month, the insurance of not having 20% equity. With FHA, you cannot do that at the present time. Um, you can't do that. It's for the entire life of the loan. The only way to get rid of it is to refinance it into a conventional mortgage. So if you have the extra one and a half percent, I would recommend uh, a conventional mortgage over an FHA mortgage just because of that. So now you're thinking of, wow, I have a primary residence. I'm living in it. That's fun. And Dandy, I, I love it. I want a second home. So a second home, or what we call a vacation home, is 10% down minimum. So a minimum 10% down, uh, and that's going to be conventional because unless you unless the debt to equity ratios that you have uh, are too high, uh, then you may have to go conventional, but put down a larger sum of money. Um, so. With that said, um, primary mortgage, three and a half to five percent down. Second home, ten percent down. And if you buy an investment property that you intend to rent out, it's twenty percent down minimum. So those are the type of mortgages that you get. They're government loans. They're backed uh, by Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, uh, and that is the conventional stuff. Now. Let's get into the good stuff, which is called non-conforming loans. Non-conforming loans are not um, backed by the government. It's what we call private money. Where do you get private money? Well, uh, from private people. <laughs> That's why they call it private money. Uh, there's no red tape or anything like that. Um, some people call it hard money. Some people call it angel money. Whatever you want to call it, it's all private money. We call it non-conforming loans. Now, how do you how do you be creative with financing? Well, 
a few things. Let's say you're in the fix and flip business. You want to get in there. You want to buy property, fix it, flip it, but you don't have the money. So what do you do? You could get a partner that has money, uh, somebody that you may know or that may trust you. And they'll, you'll go 50-50 partners and you're going to split all profits 50-50. The problem with that is it can be quite costly because hard money re does require you to put down eh, 25, 30%, but they really don't care about the documents so much, the income, the assets, and verifying employment or things like that. It's um, pretty much a low doc or no doc loan. So with that said, it's easier to get a loan the more money you put down. I mean, if you put down 50%, you shouldn't have any problem with getting a loan whatsoever. The problem is with these hard money lenders, the interest rates are high. But it's for people that are not interested in keeping the mortgage for very long. So that's one non-conforming loan. Um, one of the best non-conforming loans I've ever done in my entire life was owner financing. This was great. Uh, I'm going to talk about owner financing in a minute, but I do want to get something out of the way. And that is people buying property subject to. Now, subject to, unless the loan is an assumable loan and you're qualifying through the bank, um, it's an illegal thing. And what I mean by that is this. Let's pretend you're the bank and you gave me a mortgage and I am employed. I have good credit. Uh, I have all of those things. Um, I put down a sizable uh, amount of money, whatever it may be. You thought I was a good candidate. You gave me the loan. Now, most mortgages are not assumable. And the reason why banks don't want to have assumable mortgages is because they don't know anything about the other person. So I can't just have, you know, Joe Blow take over my payments because I'm still on the hook for that. I'm the one who signed that mortgage. So unless that mortgage gets transferred to someone else, and is assumed by someone else. Now, banks don't want that. Why would they? Let's say I got a super low interest rate. Why on earth would a bank want to have an assumption clause in that contract saying, oh, wow, Mike, you got a really super low rate, and now someone else can assume that mortgage and get that same super low rate? They're going to want to refinance that person totally, completely on their own merits. Now, if I don't tell the bank that um, I'm letting somebody else assume my mortgage, then that's an illegal thing. And that's called an alienation clause. And that uh, will cause the bank. That's, of course, let's say you're the bank. And you're going to say, wow, Mike, we said we lent you all this money. Now you let somebody else take over and you didn't tell us about it. And because you didn't tell us about it, um, you sold the property to somebody else. And now the collateral is tied to someone else, but the mortgage is still tied to you. And that's the problem. So banks want to... Um, they want to qualify the other person. And mortgages that are assumable are very, very rare. Banks do not like it. They don't. And I haven't seen an assumable mortgage out there in a very, very long time. So talking about that, and I know that there's a lot of videos out there about buying property subject to, but be careful about taking over someone else's payments. Even if you are a good person and you make all of their payments and everything, then that's great. Um, most of the time, what I found out is people don't make the payments. Now they own the property. 
and now I have control of the actual asset, but um, they don't make the payments or they stop making the payments. And the person who's on the hook is the person who originally had the mortgage done. So please guys, do not get into that web. Uh, it will not work out for you well. I do have a different option for you that's going to work out much, much, much better. You're going to thank me for this, and you're going to thank God that you watched the video to the end, because this is my favorite, and this is called um, seller financing. So how does it work? Well, I did that one time. I was looking for, um, actually, I was looking for a listing. So I'm driving through the neighborhood, and I saw a for sale by owner, and I thought, well, let me go in there and talk to this uh, owner and see if she wants to put her house on the market with me for sale. So I go in there and she tells me, she says, I'm so sorry, Mike, I'm not dealing with real estate agents. I'm not paying a commission. I said, that's fine. This is a very beautiful home. You know, it's something that I would buy for myself. But right now, banks are not lending money to real estate agents, so I can't get financing. And she told me, she says, Mike, well, I own this house free and clear. And if you want, I'll be your bank. And I said, really? That's great. Uh, but uh, how much are you going to charge me for interest? And she did, you know, charge me a little higher interest rate than normal, but it was only a half a percent higher. And so I thought, wow, you know, a half a percent higher. I get uh, owner financing. Uh, she's going to go ahead and become my bank. Was there any red tape? Did I have to qualify? Did I have to verify income? Did I have to verify assets? Did I have to do any of those things? And the answer is no, I did not. And so, of course, I, you know, I gave her some documents of my own free will saying, yes, I'm able to make the mortgage. But her interest was more that if I didn't make the mortgage, then she would be able to get the house back. She would be able to foreclose on me and get her house back. In fact, a lot of people, um, not a lot, let's say some people out there actually bank on that. They're like, wow, you know, if you don't make the payments, that's fine. I'll foreclose on you and take the house back and then I'll have my house back. I'll have the asset back and you were just a renter here. So that is a very unique way of getting homes if you don't have any money uh, that or very little money to work with and you have a hard time because you may have credit issues or uh, income issues or you may have uh, other type of documentation issues that the banks require um, on a normal conforming loan. So those are the type of loans that are available out there. You have your regular conforming bank loans. Uh, you have your non-conforming hard money lenders or angels or uh, any real estate investment group will lend you money. But the terms are going to be put some money in the game. You got to have some skin in the game. And that's normally 25 to it could be 35 percent, maybe more. Or my all-time favorite is owner financing. And so there you have it. That's how you can get money for real estate of buying property. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment down below. Give us a like if you thought this uh, video was helpful. And please subscribe because there's more exciting new videos coming up just like this one. But I'm going to teach you on how to make millions of dollars in real estate, just like the big moguls, moguls do, and you're going to love it. So stay tuned, subscribe, and I will see you at the next video.